to impeach or not to impeach? That is the question. Should have been a philosopher. Think of the impeachment battle like this, as a giant meteor hurtling toward the planet. So let's hop aboard this speeding meteor. Come on, it'll be fun. We start here with five impeachment stories from the week that was in just 30 seconds. Number one, Senate Republicans said they would have no choice but to hold a trial if the House impeaches Donald Trump. Number two, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo admits he was on the infamous July call with Trump and the Ukrainian president. Number three, former U.S. Special Envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, testifies on Capitol Hill. Number four, the New York Times reports Adam Schiff knew about the whistleblower's accusations before the formal complaint was filed. And number five, Donald Trump tells reporters he thinks the Ukrainians and the Chinese should be looking into the Bidens. This week, my guest is Dana Bash. She's CNN's chief political correspondent, and she's covered literally everything in politics, from Capitol Hill to the campaign trail and back. Here we go. Okay, let's start simple. What's the one, one storyline this week in the impeachment story that we are going to keep hearing about in weeks to come? You know, the biggest is that the president keeps saying out loud and in public what he said in this phone call. He said it loud Saying and clear. the quiet part out loud. He said the quiet part out loud, <laughs> and he added to that. Yep. He added, oh, and it's not just Ukraine. How about China? I'll ask China to investigate uh, Joe Biden. It just, it just blows the mind. China should start an investigation into the Biden. This is not normal stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, so speaking of not normal in comparisons, I'm old enough, and you're barely old enough to remember the last time we went through impeachment That's in so nice. Washington, so nice. impeachment proceedings, Bill Clinton. What's different now versus back then? Well, there are lots of differences. I think the most important that we're seeing play out is that Bill Clinton was in his second term. He'd already mm -hmm. won his second term. Yep. And Donald Trump is not only in his first term, he is actively in a re-election campaign and has a huge apparatus already built up, a, an enormous war chest built up. $125 million dollars so, raised in the third quarter alone. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so they are, are actively becoming the anti-impeachment political yep. juggernaut team. Right. And so that is the war room that President Clinton had inside the White House because he didn't have a re-election. Uh, team because mm -hmm. it was already done. You mentioned this a little bit. Let's, to the extent that we can, go inside this White House. What's the mood right now? Do we have any sense of, is there an isolated Trump, a resolute I Trump? I think we saw it. I mean, it's like he says the quiet part out loud. <laughs> he puts it all out there. Um, the angry Trump, the exasperated Trump, the unhinged Trump was in the Oval Office with all the cameras there. That's the guy who his aides have to deal with, plus plus, as he would say. Yep. And um, and I will tell you, in talking to one um, administration source, there are people inside the White House who are frustrated because they actually think the Bill Clinton model of not giving it more oxygen with a presidential statement. And just try to put your head down and, and do your work and talk about, I don't know, the economy mm -hmm. or what he's doing with China or his Medicare plan, and um, and he won't listen. All right, you mentioned reporting. I want to talk about a, a piece that, that you wrote this week, which is you haven't heard a lot from Republicans on this Ukraine call on where it goes from here, on the possibility of the president of the United States being impeached for only the third time in history. Why and does that damn break? Well, we saw some spin at the beginning. The real Trump loyalists were spinning out of control, that it's a nothing burger, that mm -hmm. there's really, you know, it's, it's appropriate. So now what you're seeing with the benefit uh, that Republicans have of not being in town, of being back home, <laughs> is, is just running from it and just not yeah. wanting to talk about it, which is understandable because what are you gonna say? Particularly, the handful or so of Senate Republicans who are up for re-election in 2020, who are in purple states, who are in vulnerable seats. Cory Gardner, Martha McSally. Exactly. Uh, Susan Collins. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Last one. The New York Times reported that Adam Schiff knew about the whistleblower and his or her, I guess, concerns prior to the formal complaint being filed through the official channels. 
Big problem, small problem, no problem for Democrats who are trying to keep the focus on Trump. It's slightly problematic, and the reason is because of the president, because he has such a big megaphone and he has absolutely no qualms about taking something that has a kernel of something and making it into something that is totally false. Whole bag of popcorn. So right. he's saying Adam Schiff wrote the complaint. No, he didn't. Adam Schiff, you know, worked with the whistleblower. No, he didn't. Here's what happened. What happened is that the whistleblower came to his to the intelligence committee that Adam Schiff runs mm -hmm. for guidance. We right. have this. What do we do with it? And the answer was take it to the inspector general in the intelligence right. committee. Right. Go through this. Which is exactly channel. what happened. Right. Even the Senate run intelligence committee. They say, that's the protocol. He did exactly what should be, and we would have done the same thing over here. So in the end, in summation, we'll probably wind up coming to this conclusion a lot, folks. We began with Donald Trump and him saying the quiet part out loud, and we end with Donald Trump and his willingness to say the quiet part out loud. Thank you, Dana. Thanks, Chris. And that is The Point. Check back at the end of every week for everything you need to know about the ongoing impeachment battle.